remark or courtesy to discuss social justice and the new report measuring success, sustainable progress index 2022. Deputy has four minutes. And it's, um, it's a welcome chance to discuss um, an important and substantial piece of work that issues every year from Social Justice Ireland, which tracks our attainment in terms of sustainable progress index or the sustainable development goals uh, over the period of a year. And I raised this this time last year, I would have had a similar topical issue uh, submitted. It's, um, it's an important milestone and it's a good opportunity to take stock of where it is we are in relation to the sustainable development goals. We do know that Ireland, it's nearly seven years ago now, played a, a significant and historical role in the process to agree and adopt Agenda 2030 and the sustainable development goals alongside co-chair at the time was Kenya. The adoption, the adoption of 2030 was one of the inter pivotal international moments of 2015, with countries from all over the world coming together and committing to do more for fair, equitable and environmentally sustainable um, development. We have had some positive progress in terms of the workings of the Parliament here. Uh, I know we have it written into the standing orders of each committee now that they should consider progress on the sustainable development goals within their area, though I'm not sure how many committees are undertaking that piece of work. <clears throat> and Minister, I'll just direct you to uh, page 36 of that report, which gives kind of uh, a nice visual dashboard whereby you can, at one snapshot, have an overview of wh how we're going in terms of sustainable development goals. And I'm heartened that the arrows are tending in the correct direction. We don't have any, we're not, there's no areas in which we're making backwards uh, travel. Um, but there are many areas that are still earmarked for concern. Um, the ones that are red listed include climate action, um, responsible consumption and production and partnership for the goals. Um, the ones I would draw particular attention to is goal seven, which deals with affordable and clean energy. Um, and it marks that Ireland's CO2 emissions from energy fuels, combustion, electricity output are one of the highest in the sample. And I know that the heat strategy was issued earlier this week, and it does identify that we have a difficulty in terms of heating our homes in a sustainable way. Um, we certainly have an issue around the affordability of heating our homes uh, at the moment, and the score for the proportion of people who are unable to keep their home adequately warm places Ireland in the middle of the rankings. And I'm sure with our ambitious retro scheme, which again was announced last week, we'll be hoping to make um, significant, substantial improvement in that area in the 12 months and, and beyond ahead. Uh, in the area of responsible consumption and production, again, we rank poorly based on this um, sustainable development goal. Our recycling rate of municipal waste is very low, and the indicators of circular material use is one of the lowest in our sample. Again, Minister, I'd be hoping for significant progress on this as we introduce our circular economy um, piece of work, which is, is in front of us and will be significant in tackling uh, not just input costs, but also um, the, the resultant emissions. Uh, on climate action, a key indicator used by Eurostat is greenhouse gas emissions. And while we're making some progress in this area, we're not making it by any way far enough or fast enough. The, um, emissions may have fallen, but we're still well above the EU average. And the other, the last of the SDGs that I'd point to is SDG 14, which is life, before, uh, life below water. And I've spoken previously in this house on an EPA report which highlighted the, in, the intense problems that we have in some of our waterways. We have very few pristine rivers left. Uh, we have a particular problem in the southeast of the country where I'm from in terms of the level of nitrogen that are finding its way into the waterways. So, Minister, I just wanted to ask you for an update of the progress of where we are in terms of the uh, implementation plan and the coordination of the interdepartmental working group and how that is going, how that work is ongoing within the department. Thank you, and I want to thank you for raising this matter and I welcome the opportunity to discuss Ireland's progress towards sustainable development goals. A renewed focus is currently being given to progress Ireland's commitments to Agenda 2030 for sustainable development and substantial progress has been achieved in recent months in respect of reviewing Ireland's implementation of Agenda 2030. The Department of Environment, Climate and Communications has overall responsibility for promoting the SDGs and for overseeing their coherent implementation across government. The 
Department is currently developing Ireland's second SDG National Implementation Plan, in which key priorities and actions have been identified to further successful SDG implementation across government and promote awareness of the goals. It is intended that the draft plan will be made available shortly and form the basis of discussion at the next SDG National Stakeholder Forum. And it is important to emphasise that given the broad scope and cross-cutting nature of the SDGs, the Government recognises that strong and effective governance arrangements are essential to ensure high-level engagement with the 2030 Agenda. For this reason, the established SDG governance arrangements of a senior officials group, chaired by the Department of the Taoiseach and supported by interdepartmental working group, chaired by the Department, will remain an integral part of the next plan. To ensure that Ireland's reporting on SDG progress is both comprehensive and relevant to its national circumstances and level of development, the identification and management of national data is carried out by the Central Statistics Office in consultation with the SDG Interdepartmental Working Group. The Central Statistics Office, working in conjunction with the Ordnance Survey Ireland, has developed an online GeoHive data hub to provide spatially relevant information on our progress towards targets under the SDGs. As part of this initiative, CSO has published a series of individual SDG goal reports. Goal 1 to 11 are available online, and the remaining SDG goal reports will be published in the coming months. Social Justice Ireland has produced an index of its own design, which ranks Ireland's performance under all 17 SDGs. And I welcome the publication of the 2022 report, which has measured Ireland's economic, social and environmental performance in relation to the SDGs. The 2022 report ranks Ireland 10th out of 14 comparable countries and is ranked 9th on the economy, 8th place in the social category and ninth on the environment. Ireland is in the top five for three SDGs, Goal 4, Quality Education, Goal 11, uh, 11 Sustainable Cities and Communities, and Goal 4, Life Below Water. A good score on Goal 6, Peace and Justice, indicates that Ireland is a relatively safe place to live, with reasonably good, transparent, effective and accountable institutions. In areas identified where work to, is needed to address some important sustainability issues, significant progress has been achieved in relation to Goal 7, Affordable and Clean Energy, and Goal 12, Responsible Consumption and Production, and Goal 13, Climate Action. And I do realise that this is <clears throat> outside of the remit of your own ministerial work. Um, and I would acknowledge as well that the, the report isn't scathing or the report doesn't necessarily paint a picture of a country that's doing badly. It is showing progress across most of the indicators and does acknowledge there are areas, for example, in education where Ireland does extremely well. And we should absolutely work to maintain that level of progress. Um, I would say that the words shortly um, is doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of the timeline on this. Uh, so the... the it's been promised that we would have the second national uh, implementation plan for a while. I would like to see it, and I'd like a concrete timeline on it. Um, and I'd like a concrete timeline as well on when that's going to be brought to the National Stakeholder Forum. I do acknowledge what you're saying about a broad and, and cross-cutting nature. And I think that's one of the strengths of it. And I spoke about policy coherence earlier when we were talking about the Town Centre's first programme. And I think that's one of the strengths of taking an SDG-led approach to these issues. And I just want to acknowledge the work, as I did earlier, of, of Chambers Ireland in producing a toolkit for businesses. And what it does in a really meaningful way, which I think sometimes we fail to do uh, on larger policies, it, is it takes a first principles approach. It doesn't just take the 17 SDGs, but looks at the 169 sub-targets that are below those SDGs and seeks to implement them in a common sense and in a practical way. And I do sometimes worry when I see government documentation that includes 
um, SDG material in it, that we were engaging in a retroactive badging that after we produce the policy document, we say to ourselves, well, which goals is it that we can put the nice picture of beside in this particular document? And I'd prefer to see us change our approach, really go back to first principles, look at the goals, look at the sub-goals, and design our policies accordingly to achieve that level of cross-cutting co cross policy coherence, which I think will help our departments work better to deliver for, for the people in this country. Again, I want to thank the Deputy for raising this issue and again, Ireland's second SDG programme is currently being finalised and it is intended that the draft plan will be made available and I know you might like to hear it shortly, but um, we will try to get a timeline as quickly as possible and it will form the basis of discussion at the next SDG National Stakeholder Forum and I think this will allow uh, uh, for a final round of input from stakeholders prior to finalisation and publication. And I think it's important to note that the report uses official published data from international sources such as the OECD, the WHO, United Nations, etc., and also non-governmental organisations such as Gallup and Transparency International. I think the composition of the index of the social justice uh, uh, Ireland's own choosing, and this is significant because the choice of which indicators to include in and exclude from an index will invariably impact on a given country's ranking within that index. And the report claims that data selection for this report is first informed by UN indicator set 2020 and aligned to this indicator set as closely as possible. However, the report also acknowledges as changes have been made to the indicator set, the rankings in this report are not directly comparable to the earlier versions of the index. And as new information becomes available, the number of indicators evolves. And where possible, each SDG is covered by a minimum of four indicators. However, the report acknowledges that data coverage across the goals is unequal. So um, I think Ireland's good performance and good health and wellbeing does not take into account the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the impact of COVID-19 on the SDGs cannot be fully captured in this year's index. And the full scale of pandemic will likely only evident in later editions. But again, I want to thank you, Deputy, and I hope that we will have a timeline as quickly as possible. Thank you.